Every day in the USA, people find themselves in court. And do yours. <laughs> <laughs> really, Benson? Seriously, you just throw your case on the table? <laughs> no, never mistake my courtroom for your home. <laughs> Court calls the case of the people of State of Michigan versus Michael O'Leary. Michael Benson on behalf of Michael O'Leary. Okay, this is the date and almost time for the continuation of preliminary examination in this matter. Just confirm we are on YouTube, correct? Thank you. Just sure. Yeah. So I, uh, at the last hearing, the people said I had additional witnesses. Deputy Corona is here. Mr. Ben. Yes, I'd like to call Deputy Corona to the stand. Danny? Benson? I wasn't listening. All right. Sir, please come forward and be sworn. Solemnly sworn and firm testimony about the guilty of the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth shall be God. See, state spell your first and last name for the record. Matthew Corona, M A T T H E W K O R O N A. May inquire. Uh, Deputy, how long have you been a uh, uh, deputy? On the road prior to that, jail. <laughs> okay. And you've um, last five years working the road, yes, sir. taking calls. Yes, sir. Uh, on March, excuse me, on February 9th, it started at the ninth and went into the tenth. Is that fair? I started at midnight. So. <laughs> okay. Um, did you take a call at that address? Yes, sir. Did you uh, encounter a Jessica Kirkland? Yes, sir. And did she make several uh, reports to you about a variety of incidents that she had with Michael O'Leary? Yes, sir. <clears throat> now I'm gonna ask you about some of those. Well, one of those incidents, um, and it's in the police report, page 11 of your report, if you wanna refresh your memory. Uh, Well, maybe I just read it to him and be agreed with it. it says in your, in your report, um, Michael punched her in the head several times. Michael O'Leary. Is that correct? You remember taking that report? I remember taking that report. I can't say that she never reported it in my report. Yes, I'm, I'm reading it verbatim to you. Yeah. Um, and would you agree with me that Michael O'Leary uh, is about six or well over 200 pounds? Approximately, sure. Okay. And Ms. Kirtland more than one time told you that she was punched uh, in the face, correct? Head, over face head in the face. Okay. Um, did she say both head and face? I don't know. Okay. Have you seen people who got punched in the face during five years on the road? I would say so, yes. Have you seen people who got punched in the face by a man, 6'4", approximately well over 200 pounds? Absolutely. Oh. So they, assuming the punch lands squarely in the face, uh, is it your experience that causes severe injury? That's wrong. That's wrong. Say it always happens or it doesn't always happen. Does it happen? Sometimes so. I'm sure it does, yeah. And in your experience, have you seen people punched in the face by a large man several times? If you, if you don't, can't recall, that's fine. Okay. All right. You heard a report um, that she uh, was dragged or ended up near a stump on her property, which I think is it's a kind of a half oval shaped driveway, gravel driveway. Do you remember that? Yes, sir. And there's a stump somewhere kind of towards the top of that oval near the house. Somewhere on the property. 
Do you remember her telling you that it was laying down there and something penetrated her that was cold? Do you remember? And do you remember her giving you any kind of detail about that? She ruled that out, correct? Now, did you uh, did you ever look for that? I, you and Sergeant Thompson showed up there also, correct? Yes, sir. And there was one other deputy that arrived. As a matter of fact, the deputy who ended up arresting Michael O'Leary. Um, did anybody look for that, I'm going to call it, object? I did not. I assume that other deputies did because I had an extensive conversation with Jessica. Did you see anybody looking for that object? Do you, I, do you have any information that that object was recovered? If you did, it'd be in your police report, correct? So nobody told you that they recovered an object because otherwise it, it would be in there. It's a pretty comprehensive report and you'd put it in there. Do you know if a dog was called out to look for that object? Were you uh, informed that Ms. Kirtland was on her period? Or begun her period at that time? Okay, you didn't, you didn't work told that. Okay. Now, did anybody, to your knowledge, go around that tree stump, walk around it anywhere, and look for that object? Do you remember a conversation in the barn between you, Sergeant Thompson, and Miss Kirtland when she, Sergeant Thompson, asked about going to the hospital? Do you remember her asking, uh, do you need to go to the hospital? And Ms. Kirtland said, no, I've had concussions before. I can't recall that exact statement, but I'm sure I asked her at one point if she wanted to go. And then do you, do you remember Sergeant Thompson asking her, no, this would be for a thing, for an examination that the hospital does for sexual assault. Right. Do you remember her turning down that request? You don't remember that. Do you remember when you asked Ms. Kirtland how did Michael O'Leary lose his front tooth? And she told you, I punched it, knocked it out? I'm saying she punched him in the face, knocking his tooth out. Okay. In your practice and training, is it usually the case that people who were sexually assaulted are requested? go to the hospital for a sane examination. You know what a sane examination is, correct? Which is a, a specialized nurse looks for signs of penetration of a woman's vagina. In your training experience, you recall being, uh, that being the protocol? So it wouldn't be unusual for her to be asked to have a sane examination. Do you know if she ever had a sane examination? On your police report, don't dial up the page. For me. There's a section called Domestic Violence Supplement Report. Do you remember filling that out? I did not know that. Do you remember it being included in your report? Do you know who filled that form out? Deputy. Pardon me? Deputy. Did you have a chance to review it? You remember on the, the, there's like a breakdown of victim, suspect, relationships, medical treatment, things like that. You're familiar with the form, obviously. Oh, yes. Now, on victim, it's checked alcohol. Would that mean, according to your training and experience, that means the victim had some type of alcohol in her system. Okay. Also, the word calm was checked. So, do you remember that being checked for the victim? Okay. And down at the bottom, it says medical treatment is checked none. Do you remember that, seeing that? There's talk about consumption of vodka out of a vodka bottle. 
Did you ever recover the vodka bottle? No. Oh. There's an accusation that the security system was uh, messed up, tinkered with, destroyed, and so I don't know exactly, but ruined or wrecked uh, that missed. Uh, excuse me. Ms. Kirtland said that her security system had been destroyed by Michael O'Leary. Do, do you remember that? Was the security system ever recovered? Do you know if it was fingerprinted? Do you know that there was a, a um, I forget exactly what you call them, those cam door cameras that record people going up to the door? Do you remember seeing that at the house? So nobody got a hold of a door cam, correct? To your knowledge. Okay. Now, there also was an accusation while Mr. Miss Kin Kirtland was laying down by this tree stump that a motor vehicle came up to her so close that the bumper hit the tree, not her, hit the tree. Did anybody look around and take pictures of a tire, the tire tracks there? I don't recall saying that a truck hit a tree, but I can also say I didn't look for tire tracks. Nobody looked for tire tracks. Now, the weather conditions there, even though it was February, uh, there was no snow on the ground, correct? And um, did anybody take pictures of the truck tire to see if there was grass on it? I know I did. Okay. Within the report, there were several mentions of her hair being pulled. The photographs that I've looked at, and I imagine you've looked at, uh, shows Mr. Ms. Kirtland with long hair. Did anybody collect any hair that was pulled out of her head? Did you see any loose hair around? Did you look on the couch in the living room? Uh, did you look in the, in the truck? And nobody reports to you, I, I have a bunch of long brown hair. You and I could have a minute? Yes. So as far as you, there was no investigation in whether or not a large truck, there's a large truck we're talking about, correct? Yeah, pickup truck, large wheels. If you remember, if you don't remember. I, I can't recall. No, it's okay. To interpretation. Yeah. But as far as you know, there was no investigation of whether or not this large truck went off the gravel roadway onto grass in and around that stump we've been talking about. Okay. Thank you. Coming on your day off. Really? Any questions? Yes, uh, Deputy, is this your report here? Your Honor, may I approach the witness with you this may. report? Thank you. I brought that up to you because I'm going to direct you to a couple of specific pages. Um, first, I want to talk about the lethality report, um, the form that's a standard form that Deputy Knott filled out. Uh, Mr. Vincent asked you about the box that is checked with the word alcohol. Do you recall that line of questioning? And um, Mr. Vincent asked you, does that mean that a victim had alcohol? And then I missed, I didn't write out the rest of the question. Do you rec recall that? And your um, answer was something along the lines of, I believe so. Do you recall that? When you answered that question, did you understand defense counsel to be generally speaking, when that box is checked, does it mean that a victim has consumed alcohol? That's how you were answering that question in the general use. Yes. You were not answering that question to indicate that this particular victim had consumed alcohol or was under was exhibiting signs of intoxication. Should not have been checked. Let's talk about um, the should not have been checked part. When you interacted with the victim, did you observe any signs of intoxication of her? Did you receive any evidence by viewing her or speaking to her that indicated to you that she was intoxicated by the use of alcohol? What about intoxicated by the use of any other substances? 
Thank you. Thank you for clarifying there. Uh, turning your attention to page nine of your report, um, and let me know when you're there. Mr. Vincent asked you a couple of questions. He asked you about um, the victim telling you that she had been punched in the head or the face, um, and you said you couldn't recall exactly what you said. Do you recall this line of questioning? Um, I'm on page nine of 19. I'm in the last paragraph. And if Your Honor, if I may approach the witness, I can yes, you may. Thank you. I apologize for my time up there, Your Honor. I'm on no, page okay. nine of my report, and I want to make sure Mr. Vincent I'm, I'm has the same copy as me. And he does. Um, nine, nine is a nine yes, it's not the same nine as Deputy Corona's, however. He's on a different 10. So, um, Deputy Corona, I have. Um, marked a little section there of where I'm at on our page nine of your report. If you could read that out loud for us. At which time Michael punched her in the head several times. Thank you. That's taken from your section of your report where you are outlining what uh, Jessica is telling you, correct? Yes. Thank you. Um, I am going to turn to page 10 of my report. I'm still in the narrative of Jessica. So I'm going to come up if your honor allows to the witness yes. stand, thank you. Perfect, thank you. So we're all on page 10 and I'm in the second to last paragraph yeah. and I'm going to start here, thank you. Okay. Uh, Mr. Vincent asked you a line of questioning regarding the victim's statement to you about the penetration. Do you recall that line of questioning? I'm on page 10 of your report. I've outlined a specific section for us. Could you please read that into the record? I pulled her shoes off and pulled her pants off and shoved something into her vagina. Jessica was unaware of what it was that was shoved into her, but described it as being cold and knew it was not part of my life. Jessica confirmed the object. Thank you. Just again to confirm, that is part of your narrative report of the information that Jessica provided you on scene. Thank you. Um, coming, turning away from the report, uh, you were asked a line of questioning about whether or not you searched the scene for an object that could have been used to penetrate Jessica. Do you recall that line of questioning? Fair to say there were there are a few other officers on scene with you. Sergeant Thompson, Deputy Knott, Deputy Lowe was not on scene. Was he in the hospital? Or sorry. He went to the scene the night or the day after. Day after. Thank you. Thank you. So he was on scene, just not that night. Yes. Thank you for clarifying for me. My apologies on that. You don't know whether Sergeant Thompson or Deputy Knott looked for an object that night. You don't know whether Deputy Lowe looked for an object the next day. Thank you. You were asked a line of questioning about whether you found I'm going to use the word clumps, clumps of Jessica's hair on scene. Do you recall that line of questioning? At any point, did Jessica tell you that the defendant pulled her hair out of her head? If I were to tell you that I reviewed your report and fair to say that nowhere in your report does it say that she said he pulled her hair out of her head. Thank you. Um, your Honor, I, if I may approach the witness with people's proposed exhibits one through four, I have already provided these to defense counsel. Okay. Yes. Do you have, is there a stipulation to admission? Or do you want me to lay the foundation? Yes. Thank you. One through four, for Thank example. You. And I apologize, Your Honor, I'm purposely not using the screens because we're on YouTube and the sensitive nature of these photos. Uh, Deputy, turning your attention to exhibit one, could you please describe for the court what we're looking at here? That would be a picture of Jessica's face. Um, she has some markings to her face as well as her neck and upper chest area. Now, when you say markings, it would if I were to use the word injuries, would that be an appropriate word as well? Yes. Do you see any type of redness anywhere? Yes. Where do you see redness? Yeah, her neck and just, just above her, the line of her T-shirt. And what am I seeing here on her nose? Um, I I don't know if that's dirt or blood. It's Thank you. Form, uh, Thank you. Turning your attention to People's Exhibit 2, what are we looking at here? 
Jessica's um, right forearm. And how about her elbow? Do you see that in the photo as well? Yes. What am I? What's noteworthy here? Redness to her elbow. Thank you. Turning your attention to Exhibit Three. What are we looking at here? Jessica's left leg and knee. And what is noteworthy here? Redness to her knee. And turning your attention to Exhibit Four. What are we looking at here? Once again, Jessica's face, the inside of her upper lip. Could you describe what we're looking at here on the inside of her upper lip? It, it looks like a large blood blister. Your Honor, may I approach and present those uh, photos to Your Honor? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Your Honor, I have no further questions for this witness. Oh. Can you redirect, Mr. Benton? We were here earlier when Ms. Kirtland uh, ruled out anything about Michael O'Leary as far as this mysterious or what I don't know what to call it, object you talked about that penetrated her. Were you here for that? Just about, I think a week ago. About a week ago. Okay. Now I've got the same bunch of photos and you've been asked to look at some of the pages my copy's all marked up I refer you to the prosecutor's page 10 of 19 do you have the report in front of you could you look at the first paragraph on top of page 10 my page 10 is different than your page 10 well, I'm looking at the bottom left-hand corner. Yeah. It says page 10 of 19. Yes, but earlier when I was asked the question, my 10 was different then. I understand. I'm, I'm asking on this page, 10 of 19. Do you have that? I do. I'm going to refer you to the top paragraph. No, he doesn't have that. He can have mine, though. I have two copies. Um, we have mysterious, over. besides mysterious objects, we have mysterious police reports. Mine also has markings, you know, but you can have my copy. I can just read it to him to save everybody some trouble. <laughs> it says, not the first paragraph, sorry, the middle paragraph. And I'll read it. Okay. Michael was still hitting her in the face. Do you see that? I can see that. I have the same report as him. Right here. You need my glasses? No, I see now. I okay. see. Oh, you're not at the beginning. You're at the end of a sentence. Okay. Can I approach and get him on the same? Can hey, I sure. Anything that would help get everybody on the same page as Michael Vincent. I will admit it's kind of hard to read this. No, I, we, but I can read. We were all message. just breathlessly waiting for you to start here. reading. Okay, <laughs> we're all everybody on the same page. <laughs> all right, we are. Again. Okay. Michael was still, still hitting her in the face. That was understood, I think. That means it was more than one punch because he was still hitting her face. It was still going on. Do you agree with me? Yes. Well, I'm reading what you put in yes. there. And I've looked at these photos. You have them in front of you. I have probably more experience than anybody in this courtroom about getting hit in the face or hitting oh, somebody yeah. in the face. Yeah, that is probably true. Thank you. <laughs> um, and I'll be blunt with you. I mean, I used to box. I was a street cop for years, and I've seen a lot of people his size and even smaller. Stand up there, Mr. O'Leary, so everybody can see how big you are. All right, you can sit down. Somebody his size, I have a grandson, who's his size, who boxes. He hits somebody in the face, they mess the face up. They break a nose, break an orbit, close an eye, it'll, the face will be marked up. Not, scrat not a scratch here or there. And there's no sign of that in the pictures. Do you agree with me? The pictures you took, the description I just gave, is that in any of the pictures you looked at? Uh, granted, but you can see the eye closed. You can see nose bleeding. You can see swelling after get hit in the face. 
It's a big, powerful not man. Not at the exact time those pictures were taken, no. You didn't, so you didn't see anything like that? When the pictures were taken... That, that's my question. Thank you. Remarked about um, her neck. This picture, you got it in front of you. In the police report, in an earlier testimony, Ms. Kirtland testified that she was pulled out of this truck. Apparently, there was two or three incursions in the truck where they were fighting with each other. Do you remember her telling you that? That she got in the truck to prevent him from leaving. And then two of them fought inside the truck. She got pulled out of the truck. And she testified she got pulled out by her neck. Now, and you're familiar with the phrase, where the head goes, the body goes, right? <clears throat> the marks on her neck. You don't know where they came from, do you? They could have come from being pulled out by her neck out of the truck. I suppose, but I don't remember her saying that she was pulled by her neck. And I look at my report with that exact statement. It's <laughs> early testimony. If somebody, what, let's put it hypothetically, just to not put you on the spot about that. Hypothetically, if somebody's pulled out by their neck, particularly a, a fair skinned woman, it's going to leave some marks on her neck. Would you agree with that? Thank you. Were you in charge of the scene, or was Sergeant Thompson in charge of the scene once she arrived? It was, I was the officer in charge. Okay. So she wasn't actually in. She was there for a supervision or insisting you. Is that fair? That's an odd question. I was the officer in charge. I'm, I'm just trying to find out what her role was. I don't mean to interrupt you, but what was her role when she arrived there? She assisted in the investigation. Okay. She's also a sergeant. I understand. Boy. So do you remember her directing you or anybody else to look around that tree stump for this object. Do you know if she directed anybody? Did you ever hear her say, scour that area for this object? All right, thank you. Are you done? Sort of. Yeah, all right. Sir, you may step down. Go back to your day off. Uh... Oh, thank you. Thank you. Okay. He, we can release him. He needs to leave. So he, he can leave. Thank you. Yes, he's released. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thanks. Appreciate it. Good. Any other witnesses? Nope. Any rebuttal witnesses or the people? <laughs> All right. Motion. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, at this time, we are going to motion to bind over the information. However, um, in the interim, we received the defendant's blood results. Um, I am going to be adding a misdemeanor count eight high BAC. I have provided the additional discovery to that effect to defense counsel. So my office will issue an amended information. However, in with an added count nine of high BAC. Yes, I apologize. I think I said eight. Yes, add account nine of high BAC. Could I inquire if the blood test came back 17 or above? Oh, I apologize. Well, it would if it's a high BAC. No, I apologize. It's a point one six nine. I apologize. Thank Is you. Is 169? Yeah, it's the 167. 167. So 167. I have, I have the seven and six. So it can't be. A... Thank you. It's an OWI. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Well, that's all you had to say. No, don't, don't look so smug like you did something. <laughs> um, but in terms of the motion, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, the people will motion to bind over on all of the felonies as written. Thank you. Your Honor heard the testimony last week in, uh, about this mysterious object. My recollection is reviewing the testimony from last week. She never connected this object to Michael O'Leary. We don't know what the object is. We don't know if this type of object is. 
We don't know if Kirkland ever had any kind of physical evidence because she refused to go for a SANE test. I have been doing this for a long time. This is not a CSC. I don't know what it is, it's not a CSC. No effort was made to look for that. The only thing I can put together on that is that they didn't buy this mysterious object any more than I'm buying it. No effort was made, no dog was called, no uh, put a spotlight on the scene, nothing was done. Nobody even looked for it, let alone did a comprehensive search for it. It's clear the testimony there was a fight between the three, between the two of them, at least two or three times. Very bodily harm. The uh, driving charge up there. So I'm going to object to the Bible over on the scene. I understand the rest is a question for a jury who started to fight how long ago was a really great bodily harm. Those are issues for a jury, but just simply not enough to bind over. There is no proof anything happened to this woman. Other than her testimony. Other than her testimony. Okay. And, and uh, I think the testimony is far from credible. She said uh, this happened. She can't describe anything except it was cold. And she clearly rules him out. The last one of the last questions I asked her, we're ruling him out, right? She, yes, she agreed with me. Ruling him out. If it's not him, it's not his body in her. Oh, okay. Okay. Rules him out. Right, but that doesn't mean that it wasn't a CSE. And also, there's got to be something there to find a man over on a CSE one. Absolutely, one of the serious charges when all it could be said, some kind of mysterious object that nobody, nobody got any kind of proof other than her saying that. And that's it, nothing. That'll be some clue. But, but that then becomes a question of fact for the jury, doesn't it? I think it comes a question of credibility at this stage. I think it's a credibility issue that this court to move on that that testimony was simply not credible. I've never heard any kind of testimony like that. Okay, but the court hasn't there's a lot in this case I haven't heard before, but I'm just saying that I understand your argument, but what you're asking this court to do in that instance is resolve a question of fact. You're, you're not asking me, I mean, and, and I don't believe that I can do that at this stage. I mean, if, if, if somebody were to find her testimony credible, and it's well, I'm asking, what it is. I'm asking this court to find her testimony not credible, not credible and not provable. But I even asked to do anybody look at the grass over there. Anybody see that she was laying next to a tree stump? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Well, you might have arguments regarding the investigation. You might have other arguments regarding what she said what she is saying but again those those are questions i think that have to be resolved by a jury i don't believe that i can resolve it at this point i'm you know i'm not i don't want to keep say this but, but you will my question is <laughs> her testimony about having some kind of mysterious object penetrator is simply not credible it's not proven by any kind of physical evidence at all. And she turned down going to a sanity exam. This woman has court experience. She works for a criminal defense attorney. She's worked in the courts for a number of years. She knew no same test is. And she didn't want one. Why? Because she knows it was going to show nothing. Nothing at all. And that's not what she wanted. She wanted to bury this man. Thank you, Your Honor. I don't know that I need a response, but if you want to, go ahead. I really want to. Okay, go ahead, and you may respond. But I know when not to. Mess with it's, thing, Your Honor. Thank, oh, you. Thank you. The the court has heard the testimony in the case. It, there isn't a dispute as to the counts two through 
eight and with, well, two through six to the uh, felony counts, the court does believe as to those counts that people have sustained their burden shown uh, by probable cause that those offenses were committed and that the defendant committed them. As to count one, the CSC, which is the crux of the defendant's argument regarding bind over um, the Ms. Kirkland's testimony. Ms. Kirkland's testimony was very clear in terms of what she experienced and what she said happened to her at that time. Um, she relayed that to the court regarding the penetration by an object. Um, it would seem to me that should she have really wanted to bury this defendant, she could have very easily, if she were making it up, I guess one analysis would have been to say that it was him instead of some object. Um, she didn't do that. She relayed what she had. It, it doesn't really become an issue of credibility. It becomes an issue of who's going to be believed regarding it. Well, whether or not she's believed because it really isn't a counter balancing story. Um, so for those reasons, um, the court believes that that is an issue of fact that needs to be decided by the trier of fact, that being a jury. The court would also find that the people have sustained their burden as to count one and therefore would bind a defendant over on that charge also. Mayor, you respond, Your Honor. Well, can I approach before we address bond? Yes. Uh, but I think we interrupted you. Was there something else before we? <laughs> Everybody's been interrupting me. So he's bound over on those counts. You acknowledge receipt of the information waiver. I have not received it, but uh, that will get to me. I don't know the charges. He stays mute to those charges. Defendant having stood mute, waiving formal reading, court will enter a not guilty plea. And yes, as to bond before I set the pretrial date. We may approach on it. Yes. Thank you very much. In, I need an end date. Free trial will be set. April 30th at 1.30 before Judge Comfy. April 30th, 2024, 1.30. Um, as to bond in this case, the court looks at the bond. I, I've heard the testimony in the case and conceivably the bond might be appropriate, but it's well out parameters of what typically would be set. Um, so the, I will reduce the defendant's bond. Currently it's set at 10 million cash surety. I will reduce it. I'll cut that in half to 5 million cash surety. Thank you.